Hi and welcome. I remember the first time I tried to tune my instrument, even the first few times. I also remember how scary it was thinking about turning the pegs and wondering if I was going to break something. And one time I did break something, my bridge. Yes, that can happen as well as broken strings. Don't worry, I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions and points to remember so that doesn't happen to you. We're going to cover several scenarios, any of which you may encounter, and we will learn how to deal with each of them. It's certainly not an exhaustive list of scenarios, but the most common ones that keep students from learning to tune or scare them out of trying to tune themselves. It's a lot of information, but stick with me and you will be able to independently tune your instrument. You won't run into any mishaps as long as you pay close attention and don't skip any steps. That is the gist of the broken bridge story. I didn't take the time to stop and check what I was doing and didn't hear that the C string was sharp and I ended up with the broken bridge. I will tell you the rest of the story at the end so we can get into the tuning. The most difficult part of this really is the aural part, the hearing part, not dealing with the instrument or turning pegs. Pegs will become the least of your worries, but I will cover that at the end as well as what to do next if you want more advanced coaching on learning to tune by ear. First, you always need a reference, whether it's just the A and you tune all your strings to that A, or all the strings from a device like my Seiko metronome that I love so much or a tuner or tuner metronome combo. You need something to tune to, a gauge. This is how tuning works. You don't randomly play the strings and... Yeah, that sounds good, yeah. Um, no. Unless you have perfect pitch, you need something to reference. Don't know what perfect pitch is? Then you probably don't have it. Now that you have your reference ready, you're going to check to see if it is in fact out of tune, which direction it is out of tune, and how far in that direction it is out of tune. The easiest way to do this is by playing your string notes on something like this metronome. This is my favorite practice device, by the way. It plays so many notes, it's a great metronome, and it's plenty loud. I can play all of my strings on it. My iPhone 11 Pro can't do that. As you can see, they are out of tune, very out of tune. If you're comfortable tuning by ear at this point, try with the fine tuners while listening to your open string notes. Reminder, we turn them to the right or clockwise to tighten the string and raise the pitch. We turn them to the left or counterclockwise to loosen the string and lower the pitch. <laughs> Remember also they are fine tuners and don't move the string very far, so there is little danger of something going wrong. But wait, you might be saying, how can you get that in tune with the fine tuners? It sounds awful, really way out of tune. I see students make this mistake all the time. This is the nature of string instruments and the interval relationship of the strings. My A is flat, and so it makes a tritone and sounds like this with the D string. Really bad, right? Well, the A is only a half step off and I have plenty of room in the fine tuner to get it in tune. So always try with the fine tuners first no matter how bad it sounds. Uh, what about this? No, you, you can't get that with the fine tuner. You, you will need to use the pick. Now, if you're uncomfortable tuning this way by ear to the notes of the open strings, you will need to use a tuner to help you. If you have a tuner like the Korg Orchestral Tuner, you will see that it gives you the note and the octave number, here displayed as 4, so A4 is the note that it hears. A quick explanation of this. As notes go up in octaves, they get a higher number, and the numbering always starts over at C. Just know that each of your strings has a specific assignment like this, and knowing what your strings are called will help you know when to use fine tuners or not and avoid string breaks. This can also present a challenge though if your note reading is not that strong. For example, if my instrument is very far out of tune and has a completely different note on the display, which direction do I go? Up? Down? 
Here is a chart showing the octave number of your strings and some guidance and what you should be watching for. I will also put a link in the description where you can download this and print it for quick reference. Now, I have said previously that you should not use your phone to practice. It's distracting. You should have a dedicated device. But I also said that I use my phone app when I have to, and this is a good example of when to use it if you don't have a tuner like the Korg or Kestrel tuner. This app, INS Tuner, is free and shows me the octave numbers here, which will help you to tune. Let's get that lovely A back. You can see that it is flat, and the tuner tells me that it is A flat 3, so I need to bring it up. All better, and again, I did it with the fine tuner. I would do the same for the other strings. The broken string happens, or in my case, broken bridge, when you start turning and turning and turning without checking the tuner to see where you are. You have to turn a little, then check. Turn a little, then check. Is it going to take you a long time the first time you do it? Probably yes. Is it going to take a long time the first few times you do it? Possibly. I promise you will get faster. It's like anything else in your playing. The more you do it, the more you will get to know how these things work and the faster it will become. And yes, we are still talking about the fine tuners. Even if you are tuning with the fine tuners, turn a little, check. Turn a little, check. What I said is true. There is little danger of you breaking something, moving the fine tuner. But then there is also the possibility of there being plenty of turning room in your fine tuner. I also said that. So if the right conditions were in place, like your string is just a little bit flat and your fine tuner is all the way out, it's possible you could move it enough with the fine tuner to break the string. Again, that's not to scare you, just a reminder to always check where the string is before you start tuning. Don't guess, and keep checking the tuner. And this brings us to using the peg. When turning a peg, you have to press in while you turn. It should be a little difficult to turn, but not impossible. It may even feel like you are being really aggressive with the peg, and that is okay. Sometimes you have to press quite hard to get it to stay, and definitely use two hands if you are doing this for the first time. It takes practice to coordinate this turning, but you will find that it isn't difficult to master. Once you hear it turn or hear a click, check it on the tuner. Never turn more than once without checking the tuner to see where you are and certainly don't just keep turning without checking. When I say once, I mean one movement of any amount, not one revolution all the way around. Pegs don't move that way. The pegs don't turn smoothly, necessarily, because they are formed to that instrument, that peg box. They use friction to stay in place. So you will usually feel the peg catch as you turn. To make sure you are turning the peg the right direction, it can help to think about what your thumb is doing. If my thumb is moving up and away from me or pressing on the peg, I am making the string go higher. If my thumb is moving toward me and helping to pull down on the peg, I am making the string go lower. This helps because no matter what side of the cello I am on, it will be the same. You can also think of it as turning the peg toward you to make it go lower in pitch and turning the peg away from you to make it go higher in pitch. Let's use the lowest string this time as an example since that is how I broke my bridge. I think this scenario is how most stuff gets broken, whether it be strings or bridge. What I'm about to do can be applied to all the strings. My C string is just a little bit flat and my fine tuner is all the way in. If I let the fine tuner out, the string will be more flat and more out of tune. Don't want that. It seems my only option is to turn the peg. Yes, the peg has to be turned, but the order of things is important. First, since I know I have to move the peg anyway, I'm going to let the fine tuner out to exactly halfway or as close to halfway as I can tell. That way, when I am done with turning the peg, I have plenty of turning room in either direction to get the desired pitch. Also, the string is a little more loose now and there is much less danger of breaking something. So here we go. And now check it. 
Did that get it close? Remember we left room in the fine tuner to finish up after turning the peg. How close is close enough? How close should you get it before finishing with the fine tuner? Remember to refer to the chart linked in the description for help with how close to tune it with the peg. The best goal is to get it close enough with the peg that you don't have to completely move your fine tuner in either direction to finish tuning. Meaning, you want to avoid having to turn the fine tuner all the way in or all the way out to finish tuning. The best scenario would be to finish tuning with the fine tuner and have it still be near the middle or still have enough room to go in either direction. This is so the next time you tune, you can be assured of just using the fine tuners, which is always easier and better. That's the best goal, but not the only one that will get the job done. If you got your instrument in tune using the peg and your fine tuners are all the way in or all the way out, you did it. You tuned your instrument, congratulations, that's awesome. You know how to do it now and can repeat it next time if you need to move the pegs again. It might go easily the first time you turn the pegs and you end up in tune and fine tuners right in the middle. It might also take you several attempts at tuning to reach this goal and that is okay. What about all this in reverse? What if I have a string that is sharp and the fine tuner is all the way out? Great question. Remember the steps and do them. Not doing them is how strings get broken. Step number one, check it on the tuner. Is it in fact sharp? Don't randomly assume. Don't guess. Step number two, remember the order. For this, move the peg first to loosen or lower the string. Ideally, you want to lower it just below the desired tuning pitch. Remember, your fine tuner is all the way out and can only make the string go up. Lower it with the peg just enough so that you can then turn the fine tuner in to finish. Then step number three is finish with the fine tuner. If something goes wrong, you don't have an ideal outcome lowering the string, then get the fine tuner to the halfway point and refer to the previous scenario I just described. An important point to remember, you still have to press in on the peg while you are turning it to lower it. If you just focus on turning it as you are going in the direction of lowering it, you might inadvertently pull it out or it might pop out completely on its own, unraveling the string. It won't hurt anything. It doesn't break the string. Just make sure you don't get scared and drop the peg on the instrument. That might hurt something. If this happens, see my video on changing strings to get the string back in the peg. A couple of side notes for those still completely frightened of the peg. Let's go back to how close is close enough before going to the fine tuner. I decided to find out and discovered that my fine tuner from the halfway point will change the pitch by a half step. This is not a scientific measurement, just a rough gauge to help. It helps to know that if I get my string to within that range with the peg, I can finish with the fine tuner. For example, let's use my D string fine tuner. All your fine tuners should be the same, like mine. It will move a half step in either direction from the halfway point. If I tune the string up to C sharp with the peg, the tuner tells me that I'm on C sharp three and a half step away from D three or the D string note. I know that I can finish with the fine tuner because I know my fine tuner will move the string by a half step. It will be all the way in, but I will be in tune and that's what we want. All instruments and their fine tuners are a little different. So play around with your own fine tuners using a tuner and see how far they will move the pitch. After you practice a few times, it's something you won't think about actually. You will get good enough that before you start turning the peg, you will just turn the fine tuner quickly and say, that looks good, and then proceed to turning the peg. But if you are really scared of the peg, knowing how far the fine tuners move can help you. One note of warning on this, some fine tuners will unscrew all the way out, so be careful. When it looks like you may be getting to the end and it's the kind that come out, you will feel it loosening up and moving side to side. That's a warning that you are getting toward the end just before it, whoops. It's not a big deal, won't hurt anything, but it's one more thing you will have to deal with. So what does break the peg or string or something else? I am still a little frightened of this. I think most pegs get broken because they're being pulled or pushed in the wrong direction and not in the direction of the peg box. Remember, push in and turn. If you are really struggling with this or struggling to get it to move, get an adult to help you move it. If it's too difficult, you may start putting every bit of strength you have into it, just trying to get it to go somewhere. So you will put all this force on it, inevitably in the wrong direction, and that's when it breaks. And certainly you're not going to break the instrument itself. 
Not ever, not in 40 years of playing, have I seen a neck come off an instrument or a peg box break because someone was pressing too hard on the peg. I have seen strings break, I have seen the actual peg break, but nothing else. By the way, this is not a personal challenge to you to prove me wrong by breaking something new. This is to help you feel comfortable pressing in on the peg. Got it? I see, I, I know who you are. Also, remember to keep calm and keep tuning. If you start to get frustrated and upset, that is when you might start putting too much force into trying to get something to move on the instrument. Don't let yourself get frustrated. Easier said than done. I know I am guilty of it too. Remember, this takes time to learn. You have to practice just like practicing a piece of music. Keep at it and you will be great at it. I have total confidence that you can tune yourself. To help, here are a couple of scenarios, a few scenarios, that could potentially frustrate you. This is not an exhaustive list, again, just the most common. First scenario, you know you did everything right, did all the steps, and took your time, and were very careful, and you still can't get all the strings in tune at the same time. This is perhaps the most precisely made, fine-tuned machine in the world, ever created. It is a marvel. These strings are working in harmony with each other, quite literally, right? Well, they aren't just working in harmony sound-wise. They are also working in harmony physically. This machine is flexible. The machine itself moves. It has to, to vibrate so fast and make all those beautiful colors and sounds. Why do we care about this? When you move a peg, the other strings that you are not meaning to move can and often move a little. Not much, a little. And a little can sound like a lot. Remember the A flat to D tritone example? And the more you move the peg, the more the other strings might move. That is just the nature of string instruments. This is one reason the goal I mentioned earlier is important to keep striving for. Getting the instrument in tune with that fine tuner near the halfway point. It isn't just a good goal for the next time you are tuning. It's a good goal for this time, the current time. Turning a peg and getting a string in tune with the fine tuner near the halfway mark will make it much easier to deal with the other pegs that have to be moved. The good news is that the instrument will eventually settle down and behave while you are turning all the pegs. There is a point where it will stop moving around so much and stay in tune. It may not tomorrow, the weather changes daily, but for now it will settle down. If you are spending too much time on tuning though as a result of not having fine tuners, don't be ashamed of getting fine tuners put on. It's a small investment to save you lots of time. You want to have that time for practicing music instead of tuning the entire practice session. Trying to learn to tune with just the pegs, take note of how difficult or easy they are to turn. They should be a little difficult to turn, but not impossible. They have to stick in the peg box, otherwise they would be falling out all the time. If they really are too difficult to turn, sticking too much, get help from an adult. If an adult is able to easily turn them and they stay in place easily, then you just need to keep practicing and get your strength up or get fine tuners. The addition of new fine tuners might require getting a whole new tailpiece, but it's worth it. I have a nice plastic tailpiece on my cello. This helps it vibrate better and the fine tuners are built in. This brings me to scenario number two, pegs. Just how hard or difficult are they to turn? If you get an adult to help you and they also cannot move the pegs and or the pegs don't stay in place easily after being turned, you may need to take it to a good luthier. Have them take a look at it and see if the fittings are correct for your pegs. Just having fine tuners isn't enough because at some point you will have to turn the peg and you want the peg to function properly. I will add that this is the most rare of these scenarios. Some pegs are more difficult to turn than others, but it is not often that they are so difficult that they have to be replaced and refitted. In other words, don't run to the string shop after the first time you try to turn the pegs and it seems like they are too difficult. It is something you have to practice and get used to. Not that difficult to master, but will take a few tries. Third scenario, fine tuners are difficult to turn, hurts my hands and fingers to turn them. This should never be the case. Fine tuners should be easy to turn. More than likely they are old, but in any case they need replacing if they're that difficult to turn. Go to your local luthier and find out about new fine tuners or possibly a whole new tailpiece with fine tuners built in. It's a small investment that will help you a lot. Next scenario. You know you did everything right, did all the steps and took your time and were very careful and you still broke a string. First question. How old are your strings? Second question. 
Really the same as the first question, when was the last time you changed your strings? Strings are made from metal. Metal rusts, and rusty metal breaks easily. That's not to mention everything the poor string has to endure. Every time we tune, we are scraping it across the bridge at a point where it is already very stressed out. And all that stuff that ends up in the string, like the oils from our hands and the rosin and the mixture of the two, expanding it to the breaking point, ugh. it's a wonder they don't break sooner. And let me be clear on this. If you have a rental and break a string tuning, don't run to the rental shop saying, Mr. McKinney told you the string must be old. When rentals are returned at the end of their rental period, they are cleaned, serviced, and new strings go on them before they are sent back out. So if you have a rental, you have new strings. Whew! You made it! I know, lots to take in. Good thing you can rewind video, and I hope that you will. Just a few more notes here about tuning. If you want to know about any of the devices I used in this video, the tuners, the metronomes, love my Seiko metronome, check the links in the description to find out more about those. The phone app, INS Tuner. I use iPhone and it looks like this. Android users, I recommend this one. Both have been around a while and even though the last update for INS was five years ago, it still works fine as you can see. Da Tuner from Google Play Store has also been around a while and I think it will continue to be around for a while. As of the recording of this video, it was updated just a few days ago. See links in the description. Eventually, I know all of you will learn advanced tuning. This is tuning by which you hear the A only, tune your open A string by ear, and then tune the rest of your strings to that A. This is the way orchestras tune. To help you, I have created a tuning webinar spectacular. It's not really a spectacular, it's, it's tuning. But it is as spectacular as tuning gets. You will like it. In that, I go in depth into this topic of tuning completely by ear and how to get there. You will get to see what my private cello students see and my orchestra students. If you are a teacher, you will get some tips and ideas on how to teach tuning. If you are a parent, you will get ideas on how to help your child with tuning. If you are a college student, perhaps you are studying to be a teacher or in a pedagogy class, take a look, there will be lots there you can use. See the link in the description to access that. You will need an email address, so you must be 18 to sign up, so everyone else out there, get your parents to sign up. It's all family friendly, again, all stuff I teach my own students. And hey, you're still here. It's a tuning video. It's like 20 minutes of tuning. It was good. It was so good you were still watching. That's got to be worth a, a like and a subscribe, right? You know you can do it. Just go down there and click that big thumbs up button and the big red subscribe button. Easy. And leave a comment. Question for all of you. What are you struggling with when it comes to tuning? Teachers, what are you struggling with when it comes to teaching it? Parents, what are you struggling with when it comes to helping your child? Students, my people, what are you getting hung up on when it comes to tuning? Let me know below. Now, the bridge story, long promised. I gave you the gist, but I didn't tell you what happened next. So there I was, in my church, warming up, tuning, to play for the service. It's soon, just before people are going to come in. I am turning and tuning away and not paying attention and pop! The bridge is now in three pieces. What am I going to do? I don't have a spare cello. But I do have a spare bridge. The bridge I have just broken is the new bridge that my parents had put on my cello. Sorry, Mom and Dad. The old one is in my case. The nice man at the shop said, hey, keep this in your case. You never know when you might need it. My dad, being inclined to think this is the kind of thing that is a good idea, agreed and said, yeah, that's, that's good. You should hold on to that. So there I go, out to my cello case, where I always put it for the service, run back in, quickly figure out how to put on a bridge, run to the piano, play my notes on the piano, paying close attention this time to how I am turning the pegs, which was all of them now since they had to be loosened to put the bridge on. I didn't have a tuner. I didn't have an adult around to help me. I was 13. It was 1990. There were no smartphones anywhere, so no adults had them either that I could even borrow one from. Eventually, just before people started coming in, I was ready. They say necessity is the father of learning and the mother of invention. So true. Had to teach myself very quickly that morning. I don't want this to happen to you. I mean, I do want you to learn these skills. The learning part, yes, let's do that part. I have complete confidence you will. But if you can avoid breaking something right before you have to play somewhere, let's, let's avoid that part. So, review this video as much as you need to get the steps down until you feel very comfortable with tuning. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.